so I will introduce Ayub Awina, who is a third year, last year PhD student in our group at the Ecole Polytechnique. He is working together with um, Lucia and Matteo. Um, our group is a theoretical spectroscopy group. So our main activity is around theoretical spectroscopy, but not only. And um, today Ayub will tell us about a new approximation to the exchange correlation potential using um, connector theory. And in um, a brief words, the connector theory is uh, the idea um, to, based on the idea to reuse results from one system or a model to describe another system, or like a real system. And one of the famous example of such an approach is, uh, we all know it very well, is an LDA functional, um, which is um, approximating an exchange creation potential um, of real system by an exchange correlation potential of a homogeneous electron gas, uh, which is obtained at the density of uh, the point where uh, the VXC wants to be um, obtained. And so approach um, the IUP and uh, together with um, other members of our group, um, tries to generalize this approach uh, to formal formalize it and um, to exactify this, uh, this idea of um, using a model and connecting it to uh, a real system. And so uh, let us uh, hear more uh, from Ayub about this exciting um, approach. Ayub, it's yours. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Good. Okay, thank you Vitaly for the introduction and thank you the organizer for giving me the opportunity to talk here. Uh, today I will speak about a uh, new approximation to the exchange correlation potential using the connector theory. Uh, yes. And so let's start from the beginning of the story. So the computational modeling of materials is a powerful tool to understand the, their properties and also to create new materials for various technologies. But the problem with this modeling that it involves a high uh, calculations with high computational cost. And also we need to redo the calculation for every system, which is expensive. So our solution is to tabulate models once for all, so generally the models are systems, are uh, simple systems, so we can, where we can do the calculations. And then we give the prescription how to use the data of the model in real systems. And we call it the connector approach. Okay, let's see the application of the connector in DFT and the specifically for the exchange correlation potential. So following the Consham scheme, a system with interacting particles can be reduced to systems of independent particles in an effective potential, what we call the Consham potential, and which is the sum of an external potential, heart rate potential, and the exchange correlation potential, VXC, which is the unknown part that we need to approximate. One famous approximation for the VXC is the LDA. So let's see how the LDA works. Suppose that we have a real system with such complicated density. At the same time, we know the VXC in the homogeneous electron gas, thanks to quantum Monte Carlo calculations done by Sepoli and Alder. And we want to know the VXC at some point in the real system. So the LDA suggests to see the system locally as a homogeneous electron gas with the density equal to the local one. Then with this density, we calculate the VXC of this gas and we use it as an approximation for the real VXC at this point. And we do the same thing for the other points. Of course, this is an approximation, and one can ask question, if 
there is a homogeneous density that gives the exact VXA, not necessarily the local one. And here comes the idea of the connector, which is a general idea. Suppose here, here we have a real system. We have a quantity that we want to calculate, which is the VXE in this case. And also we have a model, in this case is the homogeneous gas. And we know this quantity in this model, which is the homogeneous VXE. So at some point R, the VXE, the real VXE is the number. And so in principle, we can find this number here in the model. So we ask the question, what is the homogeneous density that I put here to get this number? So the short answer is to invert this equation. But since we don't know the VXE and it is what we are looking for, we have to approximate this equation. Now, if we make a direct approximation to the real VXE, we can stop here and use it, but we want to profit from the calculations done in the model. That's why we do the same approximation in the model. Then now we can invert this, this, uh, this equation to get the connector density. NH, what we, I call it. Now, when we plug the connector density in the VXE of the gas, we get an approximation for the real VXE. Okay, so this is quite general. And in practice, we need to specify the approximation. So let's specify the approximation. Let's take the most intuitive approximation, which is a first order expansion around fixed density n bar. And so here we have the FXC appears here, evaluated at fixed density, and uh, which is available thanks to the feet of Corradini. In the model, we have uh, the zero order term and we have the macroscopic exchange correlation kernel, which is just the direct derivative of this VXC. Okay, now by inverting this equation, we get our connector density on H. And by putting it in the function of the gas, we get an approximate functional for the real VXC. This functional is non local, as you can see here. And also for a slowly varying density. You can see here that we can take the dusty outside and we find the LDA. And also for a rapidly varying density, the connector tend to the weighted density approximation, which is correct also for this limit. So the connector is trying to interpolating between this limit. Okay, uh, at the first time, I tried this approximation for toy systems. And so the results uh, were promising and this um, motivated me to implement it in a DFT code to calculate the charge density. Okay. Now let's see uh, the, the connector density. Uh, first, we need to define the benchmark, uh, the, our reference density, and I, uh, I took it from this reference, which is a uh, density for silicon calculated using quantum Monte Carlo. In this reference, they show the density in uh, this specific route, starting from the center of silicon sil silicon bond, then we go along 001 to the other bound, then along 110 to the other bound, and then we back to the initial point. And here they show the difference between the QMC density and the densities comes from 
different approximation of VXC, like LDA, PB, PB for solid, and so on. And here we have the corresponding percentage difference. So what I did is to reproduce this figure and to include the connector among them. Okay. So the first uh, remark here that you see that we are looking for very small errors. So uh, the range of the error is uh, between minus 10% and 10%. And the second remark that the connector is yielding a good estimation for the density, which is comparable to this uh, famous uh, approximation for the VXC. Uh, here I have the shape of the density to in order to see where, where the density is important and where the density is low. And uh, uh, in the gray line is the error bar of QMC. Uh, if we see here in the low panel, we see that the connector density is uh, correcting the LDA because it captures no local effects. And also it gives a very small error which is uh, similar also to the PBE zero and which are both very good. In order to get uh, an idea about the ranking of this approximation, let's calculate the mean average error. So here we have the error bar of QMC and then here we have the connector which is 0.5%, almost half the error of PBE zero. And then we have PBE and LDA with 3.10%. Okay, so I did the same thing for sodium chloride. So here I reproduce the same figure and uh, I mean, in the same direction, but for the density of NACL. Uh, for in this case, the connector has some difficulties here. Here you have uh, the connector in CN dashed line, has some difficulties on the atoms of uh, sodium, but still it improves the LDA. And also we see that uh, for sodium chloride, uh, PB, zero, uh, PB and uh, B3 lip are the best here. And I think this is because uh, the density of uh, NACL is very localized and then becomes very low between the atoms. So it is far from a homogeneous system. Okay, let's look also to the mean average error. We have uh, battery leap with 0.668%, then PBE, then we have PBE zero, and then the connector which, which corrects the LDA by factor of two here. And uh, with this, we can come to this conclusion that using the connector theory, we can improve density functional by designing non-local approximations. Uh, also, we, we, we have seen that the connector VXC leads to a good estimation of the density. It was very accurate in the case of silicon and the good estimation for NACL. It corrects the LDA because it captures no local effects. And uh, another important point is that the connector result can be always improved since it is based on systematic approach. Uh, I mean by that, if we improve, if we change the model, we take a model close, closer 
to the real system or by improving the quality of the approximation, then automatically will the result of the connector will be improved. Um, now, because we have uh, QMC density that we think it is exact, let's invert this density to construct the corresponding VXC, which will be the, the, the VXC of the exact Concham system. Okay, in the literature, I didn't uh, find an algorithm for solids. So please tell me if you know. Uh, but I uh, took this algorithm, which is designed for molecules. So uh, the starting point is the reference density, means the QMC density. Uh, and in this case, I take the density of silicon. And a first guess for the VXA. Then we construct the Hamiltonian. We diagonalize this Hamiltonian to, to, to calculate the density. And then we update the VXC through this equation. And then we iterate until convergence. You see here that this update is uh, local. So this algorithm probably will be uh, nice for something like LDA. And uh, you can wonder if it works for VXC of QMC density. And actually it works because if you see here, uh, the error of the density that comes from the inverted VXC is very small comparing to the QMC one. So it's all, almost zero, except on atoms. And on atoms, so th this is the region that we don't trust. Uh, also here we have a comparison between QMC, VXC, LDA, PBE, and the connector. Um, so a general remark, uh, they are all almost the same. Are, they are similar, but if we see the, to the percentage error, we can, we can see here some differences where the density is very low. And then PB and LDA, they are almost the same in the region with the high density. And let's say, let's say in general, the connector is quite uh, performing well here comparing to the PB and LDA. And this is not surprising because it yields the, the most accurate uh, approximation for the density for silicon. Okay, now we have the VXC and then we have the, so we have the exact concham system and we can look at the band gap of silicon. So here we have the LDA band gap, the connector band gap, PB and QMC, which is the exact concham system, or at least we consider it exact. Okay, we, we see that the connector and PB are both, they give good estimation for the band gap. Uh, something interesting is that PB is slightly closer to the QMC than the connector, while for the density, it was the connector who who is closer to QMC. But here for the band gap is the contrary, which is interesting. Uh, also, another remark that these uh, results are cons consistent with an old study by Godby, Schluter, and Chan. So here they, they calculated what they call an accurate exchange correlation potential for silicon. And the way they do that is by taking uh, self-energy 
from GW. And by the way, GW gives a uh, good estimation for the experimental band gap. And then through the sham schluter equation, they invert the VXC. And they find uh, the VXC that correspond to the exact Consham system. And the conclusion here that uh, even the exact VXC is underestimating the experimental gap. And so uh, it is useless to invest in designing good uh, estimation, a good approximation for the VXC if we want to approximate the experimental band gap. And we see that our results confirms this conclusion. Okay, so here I came, I come to another quantity that we can look at. Here, the exchange correlation energy. And the problem was that my connector is designed for VXC. And so I wanted to write the exchange correlation energy density in function of VXC and another term. And then I will approximate this term with connector and this, the other term with uh, some famous approximation like LDA or PB. Okay, I did that. And this is my first results. So uh, the exchange correlation energy has two components, this integral density VXC and this term. So if you look to this term, you see here that the LDA is performing better than PB and the connector. Then we have PB and, and the connector gives the worst uh, approximation for this integral. But for the density, it was in the opposite direction. Uh, the, the connector was good for density and for VXC, and then we have PBE, and then we have LDA. And th this is very intriguing. So at the first time, I didn't know why. But when we calculate the total exchange correlation energy, we have some, we have results that are consistent with the ranking of the density. So we have PBE, which becomes better than LDA here. And then we have the connector with LDA means the connect connector for this part and LDA for this part, which gives uh, an error almost comparable to LDA, but in the other direction. And the best was connector coupling with PB. Okay, so we have the worst approximation for this part and the worst approximation for this part yields the best results. And uh, I didn't understand that uh, at the first time, but what I did is to uh, calculate the PBE from its formula. And then I used the, the algorithm of the inversion to reproduce the PBE. And what I found is that there is a shift, a constant shift between the results. And the problem is how to align the, the results. So this QMC VXC is defined up to a constant. If we have a finite system, then we can fix this constant by uh, taking the, uh, the VXC equal to zero when we go to infinity. But here for silicon, we have an infinite system. And so I don't know how to fix this constant in order to compare with the other approximation. Um, and this raises a general question. So suppose that I give you a density and an external potential. In principle, my Hamiltonian is well-defined but uh, then I don't, I don't find a unique 
VXA. And they don't have scheme to, to fix the constant. Yeah. Uh, well, I did uh, try. What I did is to, to fix the top balance eigenvalue. So I mean by that, I take the top balance band for LDAPB connector and QMC and I align them together. Then I compare this integral. And actually this makes the result more reasonable and they, they go in the same logic as the density. So we have a connect connector, which is as the PP are uh, performing well, comparing to QMC. Then we have the LDA and the same conclusion for the other components. And even also for the total exchange correlation energy. Of course, this is a choice. And uh, I think like that, this VXC is not uh, totally well-defined. So maybe you have some insights. Okay, the conclusion from this section that uh, we need for, for each quantity, we need a connector. So if you want the exchange correlation energy, we need to design connector for it. And the question is how can we fix the constant of an inverted VXC in infinite system? Okay, and here I come to my general, general conclusion. So the connector theory is a general approach for systematic approximation. And uh, again, systematic approximation means that we can always improve the model or the approximation. Uh, using the connector theory, we, we designed a non-local functional for the VXC. And it gives a very good estimation for the density of silicon and the reasonable one for sodium chloride. Uh, also, uh, we, we have calculated an accurate VXC for silicon and uh, sodium chloride. And, uh, and as an outlook, uh, uh, I am working on a connector for the total energy and uh, I, plan also to use non-homogeneous model in order to improve the results for Anasian. And uh, yeah, and uh, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ayub.